Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and just start back at the beginning with easy mode. And I had said I might not cover the, the, the one, one row thing, but I think I, I think I will with the way things are working out. So I've just come into um, Panagraph and, and I changed the, easy, the, the mode to easy. So we're in easy mode now. So the first thing you do um, when, you, when you open up easy mode, you're going to set your width. So um, um, let's see, I had already set it, I think, but I'm just going to, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and enter it, but because you're not able to really watch, watch the, um, the quilt anyway. So I'm going to have a width of 40 and a total height of 50. So, um, and if you want to see the grid lines, then you click on the options and make sure that green check mark is there. Say, okay. So now you've got your grid lines and, and then you want to select your pattern. That's the next thing you want to do. So select pattern and we are going to stick with, um, designs that are in here. Oh, I know what I was going to do. Hang on, hang on. I'm sorry. I know what I was doing. I'm, coming back to me. I was going to show one border. So let's just say you have a border and it's 25 inches long, okay, and three inches high. So all you really want to do is, is just fill in this border. And so you select your pattern next and you're going to pick that. And, and so you see that it looks squirrely right now. So all you have to do is tap on center and um, it gives you this message because right now the lock is locked so it's trying to maintain ratios it probably can't because of just being three inches but but go ahead and say yes and then look what happens immediately your row gets filled nicely and you are, are ready to stitch them and then this would be an example of where you place as a single pattern and then you have these choices, which probably you would want um, two points so that you can do the, um, um, the stretch. So you would be able to, to move your machine um, to wherever you, ex wherever you wanted that stitch to pick up at, that's where you would move your needle and touch there. And, um, and then same for the other end. I, I have no idea what's going to happen because since I'm not really doing this for real, but, but you see what you would do there. Pick your two points and stretch and, and just that quick, you have, you didn't have to figure out, huh, how many patterns across do I need and what, what height, what width, none, none of that. Just so quick. Um, you did that. So, um, let's see. I'm looking at the um, the handout for the single row just to, to make sure I covered everything. So these these three hearts, different patterns are going to look different. Like in in the design um, on the handout, I used the feathers. So you can see with this um, with this bottom one how they're how they're doing. But now. I could change the width. Um, let's see if I hit center though. Still doesn't connect them. Let's see. Am I able to change the width here? So I could grow the width. I don't know what it is right now. Let's see. I could make it 15. That still didn't connect them. Anyway, um, but you you can toggle through these and and whether if if center is is selected, then it's staying true to the um, to the pattern you might say. But as soon as I hit um, this, the center, so it turns into stretch, it's going to fill this. And then I do the next one, and you get the wrapping with your second choice down. If you needed wrapping, that that's when you would get it. So. Um, Let's see. I'm going to go on uh, for the sake of time. I'm going to leave behind the um, the single row design because I think you kind of got the got the idea of it if you were using it for a border, but because that's probably the the most common use. So you would want it to be that top choice, and and maybe you want to um, flip it 
um, or not. Or, so you have you have your flip choices there, but then you're going to sew in zones, and and then no, nope, I meant to say splice is a single pattern. Duh. No, go back. But that's when you would place places your single pattern. Pick your two points, pick your stretch, and then you can um, exactly place it. So that's just a, a fast, easy way for doing a border. Since you didn't have to um, be ticking away on number of patterns and and does it look good? Is it right? Um, these sh the pattern numbers and rows show, but I, like I'm tapping on them and they are not clickable. They they reflect what they are, but that's all you get. Um, so <clears throat> I mentioned beginnings people earlier. So if you are a beginnings person and you know that your height is, we'll just say nine inches. I think that's common for a 15. Um, so if your height was um, nine, and let's say, so you picked a pattern, maybe you like the diamonds, okay? And we want want that to be the whole nine inches. Then, then as soon as you tap on center, you have to say yes, and stretch, it fills it. So for... So for a width of 25 with a, that probably wasn't a gr great example, but, but you're able to feed your measurements in here and get what number of patterns are going to look, conform the closest to the ratio. You're going to lose the exact ratio when you tap on stretch because that's going to fill it from end to end. But you're still able to just tell how staying as true as you can to the width and height ratios for this pattern how many patterns do I need across? So you can just kind of use it for that. Okay, but we're gonna we're gonna go back into the um, just the regular easy mode. If you're gonna do um, a a quilt and you're gonna use easy mode, and at this point, I like to use patterns that don't nest. And the reason is because you can't get a partial row at the top. Even in beginnings, we were able to select the blue arrow and shift everything up until the gaps weren't showing, but you don't have that option in here. Um, you can increase and decrease the um, the height, and you can stretch it, but um, you you don't have have that ability for the partial row. So that's why I'll, and that's another reason it's good for borders, but because. Um, you're, you're usually not wrapping a border vertically either. But um, So for me, doing a quilt that I'm not going to quilt off the edges, then I really don't like to use a nested design. So that makes this perfect. So um, if you're doing one of the little kids' quilts where you're going to use the, the backing to flip over for the binding, this is absolute perfection. It really is. So... Um, so the first thing you want to do is set your width, and just to save time and not use the ruler, I'm just going to key in amounts. So we're going to say this quilt is 40 inches wide, and it's 50 inches high, and then um, I'm going to click on that red X and get rid of that pattern, and we're going to select another one. Let's see. So a one that commonly gets used is the stipple, so we'll just open the stipple. Okay, so this looks weird right now, but we haven't entered the pattern height. That's what you have to do next is your pattern height. You know, what, what do you want for your pattern height? So, yeah, well, well let's see. Let's, let's do seven. Let's do seven and see how that looks. Okay, so now it immediately filled the screen. I didn't have to tap on anything. It immediately figured out with the um, default um, width and height for this panto that I need four patterns across and seven rows down. But this is with that lock locked. So if I unlock that lock, now I'm able to spread it to the sides, okay? Because I want that filled in. And I can, I can go through here, you know, depending on what I want. But when I'm doing things like this, if I'm not doing a partial row at the top, chances are good I don't want any wrapping on the sides either. So I'm going to leave it with this top row of hearts there. So it's just kind of nesting across without wrapping. And I'm going to tap on the word center, which changes it to stretch, which now fills in the ends. 
And, and this stretch, is, it's just stretching it vertically. I don't know that you really see much difference with this one. Um, but j just that quick, I am literally ready to sew in zones because I don't need to do any of these things. I do want to point out right here, the stagger um, icons are grayed out, so they're inactive with that top selection of hearts. When you do the next two, they become active. So if I wanted to stagger by half a panto size, I could. So same, same with the third row of hearts. So you just kind of have to play around with, with um, what, what you want and how to get there. But, but just know that that first selection, um, it grays out the stagger. But unlike Power Panto, where you could not stagger, you can do half a stagger here. So, but you just have to have that second or third row of hearts selected to do it, to, to get them active. And, and then you can, um, if, if, you're, if you're tapping on um, horizontal um, flip or vertical flip, if you tap on this, it's going to do it for all the odd rows, so one, three, five, seven. And if you're tapping on horizontal or vertical down here, it's going to do it for the even rows. So that's if you need to, um, to stagger. So this one, I don't think needs stagger. Um, if I wanted to go up and, and look at it, at it closer, I could. And one thing I was trying to say earlier when the, when the video was so bad is with some patterns like that are really big, you may want to look at, at a certain area a little closer. And if you just leave your finger on the screen, you're able to shift this around just to, to really look at exactly where you want to look at. So I'm going to go back and tap on fit and then tap on the red X to go back to all of these selections. And <clears throat> so I would, I would want to save it here so that I could come back to it. And, and then these, these are your choices that you have in all the screens. That's a, un, and, if you, and if you hover your finger over it, I, th I think, you're able to see it'll, um, you're able to see what it does. So this is undo your last action and that's redo your undo. If I were to tap on reset, it would go back to just a single pano pattern. And then if I clicked on the red X, it would clear the entire screen. So that's what those are. And then you could, you could tap on print and print out your panto if you wanted to. And then with, with the update, and that's the, um, this is what you'll be seeing when, when the update gets released, you will see this resume zone sewing session up here in green. So once I tap on sew in zones and it asks me to save, that's where I will find it. So if I come back at a later date, um, rather than opening up the pattern saved here, unless I wanted to make changes to it, because this is when you save here, that's where you get to make changes is when you open that file back up. But saving it here, you can't make any changes, which is probably better because that way it protects you from yourself to do something that you don't want to do. So um, just know that once you get your update that you're going to start seeing that on your Panto Stacker screen so that uh, when, you save, when you save it here, that's where you'll find it again. So would you like to save it? And, and you would say yes, and then you would save it in here. But for, for time's sake, I'm going to go ahead and cancel. But you would enter it here, and then you would say save and enter. So, um, but we're going to save time and just keep going. Um, so at this point, I need to go into Zone Manager. And yes, I still want to go in there. It's just letting me know that I'd have to replace my zone if I'd already placed it. Um, over here on the left, I can arrow down through the different zones. If you needed to come back, you'd want to keep note of what zone you needed to start back with. But you know what? Let's say you didn't. Let's say you didn't. Then um, you could probably just pick one and, and, and guess at it um, because there's something unique about using this mode, which is a reason I really, really, really like it for the kids' quilts. And I'm going to show you what I mean here in a second. But anyway, so check and make sure that the height is good for your machine, 95 for a 21, 90 for a 15. It shouldn't change. It should stay there. Once, you, once it's set for something, it shouldn't change until you were to change it. Then we have our zone placement. So um, center is where when it gets through, it's going to go. Um, you're going to tap finish. It's going to go to the center bottom 
or if it's nested, it's going to um, be a little bit up from that spot. And choosing four point, then you can either um, do just the top left corner, or you can do it in the top right, or uh, however many corners you want to do. You just have to do the top left, but we're going to go take it back to center. Um, your zone start position, you either sew from the left or it will alternate. It'll stitch starting from the left, or then it'll start from the right, and then start from the left. Uh, we're just going to leave it start sewing from the left, but I know some people like to switch back and forth. They say it helps keep their um, quilt more square on the rails. And then your sewing direction, um, sewing uniform, that is if you wanted it to start on the left, end on the right, start on the left, end on the right. When you have that one selected, that's when you'll see blue lines a lot of times. You'll see blue lines across your screen. You're like, where's that coming from? It's because this uniform is selected because it's just saying every row starts on the left. If you tap it down to back and forth, it's going to sew across and then you'll get a jump stitch down and then it'll go back across. But um, I want to add that if you have that selected but then you go into optimize and you say remove all, you remove that jump stitch that was there. So unless you um, remove jump stitches one by one. So uh, it's just something to be aware of. And then continuous is where it's going to sew across, stitch a straight line down, sew back across, stick a straight line down. And um, if I'm staying within the quilt top, I actually um, want that second choice. I want that jump stitch. So I'm going to go back up to zone one and we're going to say OK. And now we're ready to quilt. The zone has not been placed because these diamonds are gray. They stay gray until they're placed. And you can see my jump stitch over here because I said I wanted that. Um, the, the pattern is shifted to the top left corner because it's not placed. So I take it to the, um, the mark that I got at the beginning. If I use that little black sewing machine, then I can um, move, move it there. Or if it's the quilt is just really, really obvious where the center mark is. You know, I, I didn't even have to mark it. I could just move my machine on the quilt and then I tap in this. And that's what places my zone. So now my zone is placed, and you'll see that there is even space on either side. And, and now I'm ready to pull my bobbin. So um, some people use the red toolbox and use the single stitch, so that's another option. Um, but then once you pull your bobbin and sew, then it's going to take off stitching, do a jump stitch down, come back across, and come over here. So I don't want to take the time to do that, and I pulled the thread out of my machine so that it's not even going to do that. And I'm going to get it over here somewhere near the end. And because the zone has been placed, it's very important, I can tap on repair pattern. And I'm just going to say closest stitch. And I'm right there at the end. And I'm just going to say, um, we're just going to say pull bobbin and make it think we're through. Okay? And then we're going to say back. And let's see if it lets me know I'm finished. No, it didn't. I was hoping it would. Hang on. Thinks it's got to go back up to the start. I wanted, I wanted to, I want to show showing finishing, but I'm gonna hit stop. Stop. Okay. Um, we're gonna go back and do this repair pattern again. Sorry, I messed up on that. Closest stitch. Oh no, that's too far. Back, release carriage, and move it up to repair pattern again. Close the stitch. I'm just trying to get it to the point where I can say that the zone has finished stitching. That's what I'm trying to finagle. Okay, very good. So I'm just going to tell it so. Oh, 
Okay, so now, now the zone is, is through stitching, and I must pull the bobbin first. I must, because if I don't pull the bobbin, then when I say finish zone and it, and it goes to the center to give me my marking spot, it would drag my bobbin thread underneath all that way, and we know how precious bobbin thread is, so we don't want that. So be sure you pull your bobbin before you say finished and, and go to zone. So, um, so we're going to pretend that the bobbin has been pulled, and just to, um, just to save QCT from moving my machine, and I'm faster moving the machine than it is. So I've got my machine kind of in the center, and I'm going to tap on finished. And the needle's up. And now I can tap through these marking methods if I want to use one of them. And, and if I do, then um, then I would I would tap on that, that green, and it would do what's selected. Um, but if I use a marking pen, then I would just mark it, and then I would say continue, and it thinks I didn't mark it, so it's scared for me. But yes, I, I did, and we're good. And then now it says it's going to move to where the fabric marker for the next zone should be positioned. So if I say OK, um, it's going to ask me if my needle is up. And now the machine is literally going to move over where I need to advance my quilt to so that that marked spot is underneath. And I may do a little fine tuning before I actually um, tap on the, um, once I advance my fabric, I'm going to make sure that my needle is, um, I'm going to move my machine so it's exactly over that spot before I tap there. But it just gives you a, a, a good close guesstimate of where you need to um, advance your quilt in that spot to. So that's kind of helpful. Um, so at this point, um, we're going to pretend that we are at the bottom of our quilt, which actually, you know what, um, I take that back. I'm not going to use the partial diamonds on this one. Um, we're going to pretend that I'm at the bottom of my quilt, okay? I'm at the bottom. And so now I can measure because I don't want to quilt off the edges. I want to finish that last zone really, really well. I, I, I want to be so exact because, I mean, I could go in here and um, arrow down. And you see that, that it has a little little row there. And, and I could say, okay, um, I'm going to say do not show again. But let's just say um, I really want it to be a little less or it's going to go off the edge. And I really don't want that. So I need it just a tad less. Then here's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, okay, and I can tell that this is, let's see, five. It's probably showing almost nine inches. I'm going to pretend that I need, um, I don't know, seven. We'll, we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to go back in here. And, and it's got this nice big screen, but I'm at that last zone. So I'm finishing, and I want it to be perfectly exact. So here's what I do. I tap on that total height. And I'm going to enter the exact amount, because now I've measured from where the last zone stitched to where I want the bottom stitches to hit. And I know, we're just going to say five. I know I want five inches exactly. So I'm going to say, okay, and then look what happens. Um, and I, I should have pointed something out. So, um, so with 50, because that's what we had it. So we had five patterns and, and 10 rows. But now when I change this to five, and remember we had five patterns, so I say, okay, it's still five patterns. There's still five patterns going across, but now it's going to work perfectly exact for, for um, that last zone that I want to stitch. And it will fill exactly in. No, I don't want to save this one. So now I can place it and, and finish ex exact. Um, without any any little extra or not enough or too much there along the bottom. It will be exact. So um, I think that's pretty neat with how quick that works with the easy um, mode. So um, let's see. Let's just ask if there's any questions. Um, 
and and I don't think I covered max. Um, let me change this back to 50. And and so if I hit reset, that's where it goes back to one. And then if I tap the X, that's where it takes it totally away. So then I can select the pattern, and we'll just pick those flowers. Tammy Krull mentions that this is where she has trouble. The quilting is smaller than the other quilting I use on the quilt. She was referring to the last row. Um, when when I do when I pull it off, I, I when I first set the total height. Okay, when I'm not quilting off the edge, when I first set that total height. I'm really trying to do good. I'm, tr I'm trying to finish well, so to speak, so that when I change that total height to the amount for that last row, it is such a small amount of change. No one but me and God are going to ever really know unless some quiltzilla gets a ruler out and just really measures. Um, so I do try and be very accurate on that total height so I don't get an obvious difference. Um, okay, so we see right here, it's just the one big thing, and uh, so I still need to tell it the height, um, I'll say 8, and now, now it's auto-filled. Um, so if I start playing around with this, and I, I don't know, I say 5, um, but I'm able to, um, well, that wasn't exactly what I was going to do. So. Let's see. I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to say seven. Then it looks crazy. Well, I can, I can, I can do that AR reset and it come back. So you have your, your reset features right there. And, and Max is, is just going to carry you to your, um, whatever your heights are there. Um, and, and you do have your ability to make things smaller. Like if I were doing these, I probably wouldn't want them touching. I might want them in right that that didn't touch so uh, I am able to change their size vertically I do have that capability and then I can still do the center and fill fill the edges um, so and, and we still have the step size where we can control just how big uh, a movement is with each tap so we have that um, let's see I think I think I covered everything but this, in a way, is kind of like Power Panto. The difference is you can't really go off the edge like you can with Power Panto with that nice partial row at the top because this doesn't let you go past. Like if I, if I were to tap on the bigger, they'll start lopping on top of each other, but you can see the top row and the bottom row, it never goes past. So that's why you're not able to do the partial row thing here. Now, uh, when you get into the quilt screen, you could click, if you have um, the center zone placement, you can tap on the partial diamonds. So you could get that at the bottom, but it might look weird because you didn't have it at the top. Um, you, you just can't do partial rows at the top in this. So that's a, that's a limiting factor. But if you're doing a quilt that this works for, this is really, really fast because um, it's going to figure, figure your patterns across and your rows down for you. Um, any any other questions? Okay, we got a question from, you got three of them queued up here. Chris Brownscheibel from Amherst, New York. I grew up in Batavia, by the way. Uh, when in sim mode, how do you get the width of the row longer than 42 inches? Oh, well, that's with the, um, that's with the, the version 5 that came out. And so, um, so if I were still, um, if I were still in version 5, uh, the, the one that originally came out, then I would just I would just pick anything. We're, we're just going to do a reset. I would pick anything, and I wouldn't do anything down here. And I would immediately go into sew in zones. So you're in. We're not in simulation, but we're pretending that we are. But this gets me to where I can get my hands on that red toolbox, and I can get my hands on that red toolbox, and I can tap on set safe area. And then I can make it exactly what I want to. Um, but a nice, nice, nice feature 
with um, with the update that's coming out um, is when you open in simulation mode, you are going to get a keypad before you ever get here that is going to allow you to enter that. And I'll, sh I'll show that, but I'll go ahead and answer the other two questions. Okay, and then Kathy Preklaska, could you change the total... Can you change the total height to 49 on the quilt to reduce the final row? Oh, instead of, um, well, you know what? You could, um, oh, I need to, um, hang on, hang on. So I had it at 40 and 50, and I think we had, I don't remember what our pattern height was. Yeah, we'll say nine. Um, oh, it was a different one anyway. Um, but, but, could could I do that? Sure. Um, but at this point, it's changed all of them. And if you've already quilted this far down, do you really want to do that? So that's why I think, this is just my opinion here, Mar Mar if Maria's still on, she may um, say something else. But if I've already got these done, and they were all nine, then <clears throat> when I get down here, I want to go for exactly the amount I need to finish with because that's that's going to be to perfection. And I speak from experience on that. With these quotes for kids I do, um, I, I love, love, love using easy mode for it because I just quilt, 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 quilt. And then I get down to the bottom. I have one zone left. I measure. I know that I need exactly maybe, maybe with this, say, 9.5. Then I do that, but um, I would do that for the total height. I would say I need I need a 9.5 exact on that bottom zone, and then I would get it. Okay. And then finally, Karen Stewart asks, are there certain patterns where changing the height on the last row would make a difference that is noticeable? It would if you um, if you changed it a whole lot. Um, when you're, you know, when you're just changing it, you know, an inch or so, you can easily get away with it. That's why I made the comment with, with when you enter your total height, do get pretty close. You know, do try and get as, as, as close as you can um, on that so that that won't happen. So, what, say, answer, ask your question again. Okay, are there certain patterns where changing the height on the last row would make a difference that is noticeable? Um, and you know what? I'm, I'm going to say no just because one of the unique things about, I'm going to change this back, I'm going to change the total height back to 50, because one of the unique things about um, easy mode, which makes it so easy, so to speak, is, is as you enter your total width and total height and your pattern height, because your row height is always going to be um, your total height divided by the number of rows, okay? So, um, so it's your pattern height you're changing. So th that's, that's the key thing with easy mode. When you come in here, you enter your total width, you enter your total height, you select your pattern, and then you enter your pattern height. So it's, it's using the, um, the ratios for that design without you having had to know them. It's, it's doing this based on the ratios. And, and that's, that's what, to me, is so nice about this, is this got figured out. Now, you do want to, um, you tap that yes to, <clears throat> to unlock the lock. So you do want to tap on that to fill in the ends, and then you can um, change, change the um, height. And see, at this point, your, your pattern height and your row height are different. That's fine. Um, but so if, if I got down to the bottom, even on this one, because this is kind of kind of a large size, not super sized, but but even so, um, hopefully I wouldn't be at the bottom and and need to have a row half this size. I, I would hope I had done a better job on the total height. So um, you know, if if that happens to you, then it may be that instead of Instead of sacrificing um, the the way that the row works, you may just want to um, I'm going to place this zone. 
I mean, you may just want to, to, to move your needle down to where the lowest stitches need to hit and touch those partial diamonds and get a partial row. And then you're going to get straight line stitches there. Um, but if you're, if you're putting them where the binding is going to stitch, then, you know, you can get away with that. So that would be a way, I think, to handle um, getting down to the bottom and not, not being able to get away with coming back and um, and making that total height there be that that amount. Just go ahead and and bite the bullet and do yourself a partial row because okay. it's so easy. Okay, Nora's got a totally unrelated question. She goes, "What is the advantage to click the automatic bobbin pull or not to click it?" Um, I, I think because I'm impatient, I can do it faster. Um, now, I will say, if I'm doing a block that's out in the center, and I want to be so accurate and so precise, then I will use, use the, um, that feature. And, and you don't have to have it selected. You can, even, even with it not selected, you can still, you still have that option when you tap on pull bobbin to move away, move back. And then when it moves back, it's going to go exactly over the spot that it ended, which if you're quilting out in the center is a, is a nice thing. Um, if you're over in the edge, I don't, I don't care if it goes down in the exact spot or not, and I can do it faster, not waiting for that move over. Like when you, when you tap on move over, then the machine goes, yeah, and then you say move back, yeah, and, and I'm, I'm just far too impatient for that. Okay, Dita is asking, after sewing four zones, you go back to this screen and change the math for the last zone. How do you, how do you back to sew only the last one? Okay, so if I had stitched this and I know that um, I need a, a one more row, but I really need it to be eight inches because I've measured and I'm like, yuck, I need eight inches. Well, you see that I have four patterns, okay? It's fixing to bump down to one row. But you see that I have four patterns, but I want an eight inch. I want an eight, eight inch. So I'm going to change that total height to eight and say, okay. So that forces that to eight. Um, let's see. And then I may need to, see, I'll need to shrink it down a little bit. So that's, this one, because it was so big, you know, you might could tell or you might not. Um, but you see, I still have four patterns across. So I've still got the four patterns going. And, and it, it, looks, it looks major on the screen, but quilted out on a quilt, you'd probably have to look really close to tell I just did that. And if I had done a design where I didn't shrink it to start with, you probably really would have a hard time telling. Okay, I've got a question from, i got a couple more queued up here. One's from Susan. I've tried to follow and I have the same measurement you do, but I only have three follows, three flowers per roll and you have four. How do you change that? I think she meant three flowers per row. It says the word yeah, per roll. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, so I've been doing all this tinkering. So you know what, let's just do a reset. Let's do a reset. And, and we're going to set the total width to 40 and the total height to 50. And boom, it fills it all in. Um, so if, if you don't have, have that with a pattern height of 8, um, did, I change, I, did I change the pattern height just then? I don't remember if I did or not. Hang on. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Sorry. Hang on. We're gonna just I bump it in. We're gonna bump it into a different one. Just I still got the pattern height though. Um, yeah. It if you try to change the pattern height before selecting a pattern, it won't let you. So that's how you'll always know. Set your width. Set your height. Select your pattern. Um, let's get some ducks in here. And then we'll be ducky. Marie Nelson just came back on that and just said center button. Um, but the center isn't going to change the number of patterns. I'm still going to have three across. It's not going to bump, bump my number up. Um, so so I'd, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure um, what, what was different, but 
Um, <clears throat> but I think I think that gives you maybe that's um, enough to be dangerous. If you if you follow the um, handout and knowing that the, whether this stretch Take off. Like, so this is an example of a pattern where right now it's uh, it's centered. Okay, so we have it centered. Um, and there's two patterns across. And so if I tap on center to stretch, now there's three patterns. So that is an example where tapping on center bumped up my pattern number, okay? Um, and and then um, I think we had covered this when we were doing the one row, I'm not sure. But um, just to make sure it gets fully covered, if I tap on um, to, to um, let's see, we'll, we'll rotate them the other way. This is for the odd rows. It's going to flip them, the one, three, five, seven. So look, that's pretty cute. So I like that. And then we could tap on this to nest them. And and then you still have a gap at the top or the bottom, but but you could, um, I'm going to change this to small, so it won't change so much. Um, but see, I could probably get away with, with some of that. Um, and, and it really, really not matter because um, you still have gaps, right? You still have that, that kind of gap. So, um, um, so that's pretty cool. You know what? I had never noticed this. I, I tapped and look down here and it says that's row six and it's there in red. I learned something today. I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> so, um, um, and then if I were to tap on the even rows, maybe I want to flip them. Well, that looks terrible. But I can, um, I can just toggle through these selections just seeing what happens, knowing that on this, on this row, um, and I need to come down here if I'm going to use stagger. Because um, with the first selection, stagger is grayed out. It's, it's inactive. And it's only on the second and third selections that um, stagger is active. So you have to keep a watch on that. Um, it, and now if I hit max, it's going to take it back to that original size, so to speak. Um, if I hit the AR reset, then it goes back to there. It get, goes back to the original ratios of height and width. Um, so I think we're ready to start on basic. and. Okay. If you don't have any more questions. No more question. Well, there's a totally different question about purchasing patterns and how easy it is. Oh. Um, that's, uh, we can address that as another topic for a future session. Doug, Doug will be happy to do that. I'll be happy Doug. to do that at some point. Yes, that's my, that's mm -hmm. my uh, strength. Okay, so we're going to go into basic now. And if you want these grid lines, and you would go up there in options, make sure that green is checked and say, okay, um, so um, everything is, is kind of manual, you might say, with this. Nothing's figured for you. Th this is like um, beginnings on steroids almost, except for you get to um, enter your total height here. So you don't have the, the coolness of power panto figuring everything out or easy figuring out your patterns and rows. And with that in mind, okay, um, a lot of you know I spent my first year with QCT4 Beginnings. So the first time I opened this screen, and um, let's see, we'll, we'll make this be a bigger quilt. We'll say it's 50 inches. Uh, oh, because of the, um, the, the safe area. Yeah, let's see. Nah. Well, we're going to have to keep it there. So we're going to say 40 50 because otherwise I'd have to reset the safe here. So we're gonna we're just gonna go back to that. But the first time I selected a pattern, well this one do we to select? Yeah, we'll select that. So we'll say open. I, I looked at this and I'm like, oh no, this is I've I've got to add rows. Do I add rows or patterns first? I don't know. Oh that looks terrible. What and I don't know. This was just a hard thing for me. Um, so I have figured out that this, this height and width will stay there. So I can sneakily go back into easy mode at this point. I'm going to use basic because there's th there's, um, choices here I need to use that easy doesn't offer, but, but I am, I'm just, oh no, figuring these patterns and row numbers, especially if it were a larger quilt. This one's obviously easier, 
But um, but for doing a larger quilt especially, I can sneak back into easy mode and I can select my pattern. Um, let's see, which pattern do we want to select? Oh, we were going to select that one. You do lose your pattern choice when you switch between the modes. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to say open. And I already know I probably want it to be 10 inches. And I'm like, aha, I need three patterns across with five rows. Now, if I were going to nest it, um, and I know that I want my, my pattern height, say, to actually be, um, <clears throat> I want it to be 10, but I want to nest it, so that's going to grow it. So I might just change that to be 9, just to kind of plan ahead. Um, I thought that did it. Yeah, it's not doing it. Um, I'm not sure why it's not doing it. Anyway, um, I know that I have three patterns and five rows, okay? So I'm going to go back over here into basic, and I'm going to select that pattern again. And I'm going to say, I know I need to, at, at least a jumping off point. I may change it. I may, I may add some patterns, or I may add the lead pattern or row numbers. But this has given me a jumping off point, so to speak. I've got something I can sink my teeth in that I didn't have to work for. I didn't have to tinker around with adding and trying to figure out how many rows. So um, that's just my, my lazy self coming through here. Um, and now at this point, it's up to me to start designing. So let me let me go to the, um, the basic handout so that I'm doing a better job. Okay, so uh, we could have used the yellow ruler. We could have used that to um, to move the machine to the left, top left corner, um, if we're going to use this black sewing machine, and then move it over anywhere along the right hand side for the rightmost stitches. Uh, then we can tap on the black sewing machine and the machine is going to move to top center and then we can say apply measurement and then whatever was measured uh, is is going to fill in um, to the um, to the width and then your height is going to be the height of your quilt and if you're going to be quilting off the bottom edge i wouldn't stress over trying to figure out Oh, well, I need to, if I have a 50 inch quilt, maybe I need to do 49 inches because you're going to be able to do that partial row option. So, so don't stress, just go ahead and enter the, the full height of your quilt and um, using those partial diamonds, you'll come out exactly how you want to. So we won't worry about that. Um, let's see. Let's see. I'm going to go on to page two and we're going to start in with the hearts here. Um, so this first row of hearts is is the is one of these choices um, that is most often used here. But I, I just want to jump on ahead. If if you want to have control over the height, or I'm sorry, the the horizontal width of yours, then you really want to use one of these. Okay, um, if you use this one. Um, you you will get nested ends once you um, make them connect, and then if you use this one, um, it's 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 you see how it fleshed it to the to the ends without wrapping, um, and then you can still um, you can still connect them here, but this is this is how um, you take control over over the width of your pattern is with those two choices. So um, I, I think most people don't, but but that is where you get that that um, that pattern width control. Like right now, um, I can't, I'm, I'm tapping on pattern width, but nothing's happening because it's not selectable. As soon as I come down here, I can tap on the pattern width and I can get a keypad to enter into. So, so if, if that's where your design finds you is wanting wanting to increase your horizontal um, that that pattern width, then try those two choices. If you want to if you want to nest to, uh, or I'm sorry wrap on the ends, choose that one. If you don't want to wrap, then uh, you choose that third one. But we're going to go back up to the top row, and um, 
And so with each with each of these, um, I think that the, when you first come in, the default is on this one. And a lot of times with some patterns, they won't be connected. So you know you don't want that. So just go ahead and tap on the next one. So um, these are going to nest across, okay? And then with your second one, you're going to get... Um, you're going to get wrapping. I haven't done anything. And maybe this isn't my best. You know what? Let me pick a different. Let me just go ahead and, and grab the, um, let me grab those so that we can actually see what's happening. See how with this one, there's a break. So we're like, well, that's not a really good choice here um, because I don't have any control over pattern width here. So um, if, I, if I tap that, then I don't get nesting. Uh, or I'm sorry, I don't get wrapping on the ends, but if I do this one, then I pick up wrapping. So it's a matter of which of those you want. Um, and a, a key thing when you're dealing with all of these rows is to be aware that as you're tapping on these, what rows do you um, have selected? Right now, they're all selected. If I tap on all, it's a toggle between none. So now none of them are selected. So changes wouldn't affect any of them. And so um, if I wanted every other row, if I tap on alternate, now the even numbers are selected. I tap on it again, the odd ones are selected. So that just depends on um, um, whether you're making changes to even or odd rows or, or all of them. So, so that's something to be aware of. It is so easy to think that you have what you want selected and you don't, and then you look up and you're like, oh my gosh. And um, But then you can always choose undo. So that's undo, that blue arrow pointing back, and then that um, blue arrow is undo your, redo your undo, and then reset takes your pattern back uh, to the beginning, and then X takes it totally away. So that's what those choices are up there. Um, so... Um, in, in beginnings, this little star here, that's not something beginnings people have to stay away from because they're only doing uh, one or two rows. I'm not sure if I covered that very well now that I think about it. Um, but this, um, this star allows wrapping from top to bottom, which when you're doing your entire quilt, that's a good thing. So if I tap on size right now and start tapping on the grow icon, wait, I need to have... I'm not doing something right. Um, you can tell I don't even use basic a lot. So if I take this off, now what happens? Yeah, so it's not wrapping, but it should be it should be wrapping top to bottom with that star. I'm going to increase it in height. Hmm. I'm obviously doing something wrong, but it's not going... I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Oh well. Um, as as you choose these these fit options, watch to see and then that that star. Um, watch to see um, is it is it wrapping or not, or is it staying within the edges? Because um, depending on what you want, but I'm not sure what I'm, what I'm doing wrong here. Okay, so we're down on page number two if you're following the handout. So 2C is the vertical wrapping. So it says the, um, the two, this, the, the top fit is, is almost like a default of what you last used. But using the second fit selection, um, when you grow the icon, oh, now it's doing it. Oh, I don't know what I had missed out, but so, um, so it's, let me let me tap. Let me get this on medium so we can see it going bigger. So you can see that it's um, well, they're overlapping each other, but you can see that it's moving past. So now, if I tap the star, now you see it's wrapping. So um, let me shrink it back down so it's not overlapping. Okay, all right. So so with with the um, with the second um, see. with the second fit selection, we we have the wrapping, okay, and um, 
And with the third fit selection, it's not going to go past the top or the bottom. It's not, it's not going to, um, even, even with that selected, it still stays within the edges. So uh, I'm going to hit reset just to gain some. So if I come back and I do this one and I have the star because I want it to wrap um, off the bottom and top and then I'm going to grow it. So this would be the one that I would want to use if I was um, going to quilt my quilt and go off the edges and want the, uh, that partial row at the top and the bottom. Um, okay, so I hope I didn't mess you up too much with my finagling around there. Um, so your, your reset and your max, um, uh, reset's going to take it back. Max will, um, set it so that the, the panto is filling the, the row height, the pattern, pattern height or row, row height, row height. Um, and, and these choices right here, as you tap on different things, you get different selections. Like right now with size selected, you have these icons and, um, also, um, Let's see. I don't think, I think you have to have, like if I had chosen this, and we're going to hit reset, so, um, let's, I've got a mess. Reset. I forget how many patterns we have. Yeah. Okay, so if I were going to do, yeah, anyway. Anyway, I'm with with these two. So I know we've got a mess there, but I'm able to use these um, these these width icons here. So um, I'm trying not get too big a mess here. Um, so if I were to tap on this, so this is using that second. I'm able to use these um, icons here, and you just have to watch it if they how they connect because they may connect good, they may not. So it's hard to just speak for all patterns, but um, but you could use that, and then you could grow them. Okay, you grow them together. So so that's um, just repeating. If you if you need to increase the um, the the horizontal width then that's, that's where you're doing it, and that's where those icons will work. Um, let me go back to this. Um, but we're going to go back. We're going to have that second selection. We're going to select the heart there, and we're going to grow it and let it wrap. Um, and now if I click on Move, um, I get I get the blue arrows. Okay, so the fit thing kind of comes into play here. Um, with the top selection fit, I have all four blue arrows active. But if I tap on the second one or the third one, yeah, tap too quick. Um, the up and down, the move up, move down, or arrowed out. Okay, so um, so just be aware of that when you tap move. That it depends on that top fit. Uh, has to be selected to get all four blue arrows. Okay, so if I tap on flip, um, again, you need to be aware of what rows are selected, all or every other one, odd or even. So make, make sure you're happy with what you have selected before you start flipping, or you can just really end up with a mess quick. So you have um, the the different selections when you when you get back to the top selection it's kind of like a default back like it was um, and rotate so you have your rotate where if for some reason you needed to do some rotation you can um, you can tap on that with the pre-selected things um, rotation amounts and and if you think well I made a mess then, then tap on zero and all your rotation is taken away um, so that's kind of a, a, um, a run through of all of those things. Um, are there any questions before we leave this screen on any of those selections? Let's see. I don't, I believe Marie's been doing a pretty good job catching up on the questions here. So I don't see anything that is outstanding at this point. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm, this basic isn't isn't my strong point because I'm so new to using it. So I apologize for fumbling and um, always grateful for Marie. So y'all just tell Marie how much you appreciate her right now because uh, I'm sure she's been quickly typing saying, oh, no, Janet shouldn't have said that. So um, no, she hasn't. OK, <laughs> she's thinking it. So um, but but yeah the your your big takeaway because you can you can look at the handout and, and it explains the fit and the star and the hearts um and play in simulation mode and just see what happens see what happens when you use these other hearts um, oh, we got we have a question okay it says from kitty in this mode when the machine moves to the next zone do you have to measure the overlay no because you paid a lot more money for this software than the people for beginnings paid for it. <laughs> so, so, so when I'm talking to someone with beginnings and, um, and, it, and they're doing nested rows and I tell them, I say, okay, what, whatever amount that the, uh, the row beneath nests up into the row above and you have to measure that row up. I said, as you're measuring, you just say to yourself, I paid thousands less. I can do this. So, um, but, but if you have Pro, you paid the good money so that QCT figures out your nested spot for you. There's no, no measuring. And Marie just answered, no, it does it for you. So, so you beat her to the punch. Marie would say, buy Pro. And then she would say, buy Gold. So um, <laughs> that was for Carol. She'll think that's funny. Um, okay, so um, oh, now I need a, um, now I need to make this into the, Let's see if I were to. Yeah. Are you planning a break soon? Or are you still? Um, I want to just go okay. real quick into the sew-in zone. Gotcha. Um, so let me kind of recoup something here. Um, yeah. Um, so I'm clicking on size. Now, see when you get really good at this, you you're, you'll be able to just click and go. But the more you play around in sim mode, the faster you're going to get. Because really, once you get a good grip on these and what happens um, as you tap on each one of them, you do get really, really fast. So um, you do want to save this here in case you wanted to make further changes to it. So I'm going to come up here and in my panto, wait, in my pantos, I have a working folder. And um, I'm going to give it a name. I will just we'll just say class. We'll say class. And I may already have one in. I will say class X. So enter and then save. Um, and, and I should have commented, when you do tap on that save and, and, you, um, and you get it saved, this right here, that right there, this is for the non-geeks out there, um, this shows you exactly the path of where that file is saved to. So if you'll just kind of notice that, uh, some people say, I can't find out where I saved, I don't know where I saved my pattern, I don't know where I saved it. So you can even take a picture of that um, or write it down. But this is your file path. That's how you work your way back to exactly where that file is saved. I'm going to say cancel. Um, so now that now that we're happy, we're going to tap sew in zones, and it's going to ask us to sew to uh, save. And then that saved pattern is going to go there, right up there. So next time we open, if we end before we're finished, then we're going to come back here. We're going to tap on this. Of course, people are back. Okay, so um, if you are if you're a beginnings person online, or if you're helping a beginnings person, okay, um, this is um, when when I talk about measuring up from the um, from the center bottom. Do you see? I'm just going to pick on this line. Do you see this little gray line right here? That is at the lowest stitch of this row, okay. And then this little upper gray line that is the highest stitch of this row so that beginnings person um, because they didn't pay the extra money so um, they'll know when they need to update to pro when they get tired of it but this is the amount that they are having to measure up because qct is only going to ever tell them center bottom 
So they're only ever going to get this point, but see, they need to be measured up. I didn't mean to click. Um, but, but that is what they're having to do. They're always having to calculate what is this overlap between the, when it's a nested design, what is the overlap between the row below and the row above? What is that amount? Because they're always going to have to measure up whatever that amount is from that, from that point mark. So um, uh, sometimes when people ask questions on the QCT page, you really need to ask, do you have beginnings or do you have pro? Um, because if, you're, if they have beginnings and they don't think to say that, and you start answering with a pro answer, it, it can it's it can get hard. You know, it can get confusing. So that's that's their that's their dilemma right there is is knowing that little point. But you're able to see it on your screen. So that's what you're seeing is the amount of overlap there. So when you tap on show zones, that's what you're seeing, and it has the the zone number in gray. And then you're able to arrow up and down over here to what zone. So if you had finished zone two. Uh, and you had opened up um, that, that green, um, if you came in, if you went into Panagraph and where it says resume zone sewing session that's going to come out with the update, and you had tapped on that, it takes you directly to this screen, then, um, then you would be able to arrow down to zone three, because you know you're going to start zone three, and when you tap on OK, whatever zone is selected is the zone that's going to stitch. Um, make sure that you've got the 100% width and whatever the height is for your machine, still good. Unless you've changed it, it should still be there. Um, if you want to do um, the four-point placement, you have the option to set, you must set your top left corner, and then it's your choice how many of the other corners. If you top, if you set your top right, then, then it opens up to set your bottom left, and then you can set your bottom right. You can get very precise one thing you cannot do is have that partial row option at the bottom. So you lose that by selecting the four-point placement, but you do have a lot of control with it. I'm going to go ahead and tap on OK just so that you see it. Um, I'm, I'm moving my machine as if I'm selecting this. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's not going to be happy, but, um, but <laughs> that's really bad. Yeah, um, so you have these lock options, um, which will either lock into your original amounts or you can unlock them. So you have that control of where do you want those bottom corners to be. So you may not, you may not get the, the partial, um, the row option, but you do have control on where you're placing those corners. I'm going to go back into here, and then if you center is always going to take you to that center position and then you have your choice of um, your zone start position if you have have selected alternate it's going to start this zone on the left then it'll start the next zone on the right then it'll start the next zone on the left and back and forth um, with the sew from left each zone starts sewing from the left side um, your last choice um, the sewing direction gives you three the first one is uniform, and I'm going to go ahead and show, show okay, uh, uh, this one. Um, if we had had two rows that could stitch, you would see these blue lines going across. I've seen several people post pictures, and they're like, why do I have these blue lines across my screen? And that's why, is because they have this selected. If When you have sewing direction uniform, it sews left to right this row, left to right this row, left to right this row. So if your zone accommodates two rows, then that's going to cause that blue line, that jump stitch there. Okay, so the next one is back and forth. So it's going to sew this row across. There'll be a jump stitch down, and then it'll sew back across. So I want to make a comment here. So if you're up at the top, because we know that we wrapped this, so there's going to be jump stitches. We're going to have to go into Optimize and take them off. So if we were to go into Optimize right now and say Remove All with this back and forth, if we wanted to get a jump stitch, it would also remove that. So if you want to keep that jump stitch on the side, you're going to have to very painfully go one by one, and, and we'll show that when we go into Optimize. But, but that's just something to think about when you select that one. Um, when you do the third one, continuous, 
Then it's going to stitch across and stitch a straight line down, which you're, if you've gone just off the edge and you're in the batting, you're fine with that. So it's going to stitch across, straight line down, come back across, straight line down, back across, so however much your throat um, allows for, for your rows. So, um, so that's our settings. We're going to say, okay. And, um, oh, I know I need to go back up. This doesn't have any, uh, any of the blue dots because we had moved down to zone number three, which if you were resuming, that's what you would do. But we want that first one because we want to see the blue dots. So now you go into optimize and, and we're going to, and we would say remove all. But if we, if we wanted that jump stitch on the side, we would have to do check for breaks and then um, that speed, you might want to speed it up. Uh, you can say animate stitching and one by one, it's going to ask you about every single break and you're waiting till you get to over here so that you can say, no, keep that break, but we're not going to do that. We're going to say remove all because we have continuous selected. Do you want to connect the first and last? No, because we don't want... Um, if, if we said yes, then, then it would get through stitching here at the red dot and it would stitch right back up there to the green dot. And maybe there's a time and a place where you would want it to do that, but yeah, I don't think you would want it here. So, but, um, now we're going to get the straight line stitch there and we'll say, okay, so now they're gone and, um, the zone has not been placed because these are grayed out. So you would move to that top center mark and you would tap there. And that's what's called placing your zone. And now um, your pattern is no longer shifted into the top left corner with a bunch of white space. There's now equal white space on the sides. So you want that. And, um, and if, yeah, I know we're running slow, slow on time. So um, um, let's see, I, I need to show finishing a zone. So uh, here's what I'm going to do. Because it's placed, I can do repair pattern. You can always do repair pattern once your zone gets placed. And I'm moving the machine over to the far left, and I'm tapping on repair pattern. And I'm going to tap on closest stitch because I'm trying to get it over there at the end. And the needle's up. Ah, I'm going to say back. Oh, I don't want it to have that much. I'm going to move it. So I'm going to say release carriage so I can move it. I'm going to move it up here. I'm going to say repair pattern again. Closest stitch. Knees up. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and tap on sew. I took the thread out of the needle. QCT is probably thinking, somebody who doesn't know what they're doing is at the hem for the little cold volume. Okay, so now it's going to think that it's finished stitching the zone, which is, that's what we wanted. Um, at this point, I must pull the bobbin, um, unless you want a thread that's going to reach from here over to here, because we have center selected. So pull that bobbin and get your bobbin thread clipped, and then you can tap on finish zone. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move the machine kind of close to the center because I'm faster at doing that than waiting for QCT to move it. So I've kind of got it in the center and I'm going to say finish sewn so I can get my mark to have to place my next zone. So yeah, the needle is up. And this is where you get your choices. You can, um, you can toggle through them for whatever choice you want. Um, if you wanted to do that mark, then you would simply tap on that and it would stitch it. Um, then if, if the second row is going to nest up into this one, you would see the stitches. This is one inch square around that mark. So you're able to see how the row that's coming is going to stitch there in case you use tape or something. Um, so, um, I, if I made a mark, say with a, um, disappearing ink or something or a washable marker, then I would go ahead and tap on continue, and it's mad because it thinks I didn't do anything. And um, and now I can I can say don't show it again, but I'm going to say okay, and it's going to ask if the needle is up. And what the machine does is the it, the machine is literally moving away from me, and it's positioning the needle over 
where I need to advance the fabric, when, when the, the quilt, when I advance my quilt and that mark I made, I can put that mark roughly under the needle. So um, I'll still fine tune it, but, but I've got a good guesstimate now. So, um, so I say, okay there, have you moved the fabric? We're just gonna go and sit and say, okay. And so now the machine is, is placed, um, um, if I haven't moved it, it's still placed over that spot. And, and I may need to shift it a little bit to get it exactly over my spot. But when I do, then I'll need to place the zone. You can see right now there's all the white space here and the um, diamonds are grayed out. So I do that. Now the zone is placed and it's ready. If this were my last zone, then, um, and I want it to cut off right there, then all I have to do is move my machine to wherever I want the lowest stitch to hit. Maybe a, half, a quarter inch, a half inch beneath the raw edge and I tap on the partial diamonds. Uh, this is a lovely screen. A pink out of safe area is a lovely screen here because that's what it does for this feature. And now all I have to do is pull the bobbin and sew, and it's gonna do my perfect um, last partial row. So um, that's a very, very, very nice feature with version five that is, is worth, worth the cost of admission right there to be able to have that perfect um, partial last row. Um, if I tap back on the full diamonds, it toggles it back. Um, so any questions? I know we've gone late. Nothing that's come up related to what you're showing. Again, there's a, about a delay before they hear that you asking for questions, but um, Marie's been keeping up, so nothing. If everything that's come up, she's been answering. She's got people wanting to buy this stuff. <laughs> she's saying, how much is pro? How much is gold? Can we get it now? You know, just, you know, this is... We'll have to ask for our cut at some point. <laughs> Wait a minute, Susan. I get the blue dot. How do I prevent them? That's from Susan Sedin. Um, so, so with blue dots, um, um, you know what? Let me let me go back and um. Well, let me just tap on someone's zones. I wonder if she's talking to ask her uh, blue dots along the top. Because if you're just it, like when you have that partial row at the top, you're going to get the blue dots and you're going to go into optimize and say remove all. Uh, you want to connect first and last no and say OK. And now your blue dots are gone. And up at the top, along that top edge, you're going to get a at the edge and we say sew in zones she says susan button last row to end quilt um if you're using the um let me, let me uh okay hang on yeah we want to open it so we're going to pretend we're down here at the bottom okay and we're going to say okay so right now, if that was really honestly where you wanted, which I would, if I barely had to move my machine an eighth of an inch, I would do it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and place this zone. Um, right now, you would have to tap on optimize and say remove all to, to get the straight line stitch. So you, you could do that if it was exact. So you could do that. Um, but if you need to kind of fine tune where that's going to be, then that's when you're going to tap on those partial row of diamonds. And then you're not going to um, get those jump stitches. That looks like it gave me jump stitches. Really? <laughs> Ooh, look. Nobody saw that. Um, hey, everybody's seeing it, but that's all right. <laughs> we haven't ended the video yet. Um, but like I said, if, if this really was ending where you wanted it to, you just say optimize, remove all. Do you want to connect the first and last? No. Now I don't know why it's doing that. Is this a bug? I don't know. Say okay. 
Um, sometimes in this optimized thing, you have to, uh, well, because I already did the optimized thing, but these yellow numbers, um, you have to play around with the order it's going to stitch in. Sometimes you can say reverse all. Reverse all is not, well, it did work. Um, but sometimes you can play around um, with reverse all, but changing around these numbers. And, um, and I'll tell you where a good place to start with understanding how to deal with those numbers, and um, you're going to be surprised at this, is go into the, um, those files that look like they're old from version 4, and, and it explains that in those, in those, um, the documents that, that are in the help files from version 4. It, it talks about the numbers and how they work and how to change them. And I don't, I don't do that often enough to spit it out. I would have to, um, I, I keep them printed out in handy when I want to refer to something like that because I don't do it enough. But, um, but that's another way to get rid of stuff like that is to play around with the numbers. Um, let, me, let me come back in here. So when you go into optimize, um, uh, you know what, this, yeah. Um, when, when I tap, you can see how the numbers change or, or when, when I tap on one. Like if I tap on that, look, it changed it to number one. So um, there, there's ways to change up the, the sewing direction that will get rid of some of those l weird lines that you see sometimes. It's a matter of, of changing up how it stitches out. But Marie will be glad to answer those questions. I'm sure she will, yes. That's, <laughs> that's why she gets paid money. Did, uh, so Susan, did that answer your question about the, the dots? And, and, and when you have this wrapping, um, like if we, let's just go on into zone manager and we're gonna go on down to zone two and say, okay. So you're not gonna see the, the, the dots at the top and the bottom anymore, but you still see them on the side. So you're gonna have to tap on optimize. She um, says, sometimes I get the dot and sometimes I don't. I think there's a button I miss when, and the question comes to a stop. Mm -hmm. Well, as, as you go down your quill, if you wrap, when I'm setting it up, you're going to see these blue dots on the side. So you're still going to have to say remove all, no, don't connect. And then, um, and then that's going to give you your straight lines um, as you, as you um, advance down in your zone so that you get straight lines on your side stitching if you've wrapped the ends. Okay.